out real bad. I'm breaking, I'm breaking out real bad. I'm so bored of this right there. What is going on, Houston, Texas? It is a sunny Saturday. It's not too hot just yet, and firework stands are open. Happy Fourth of July to you guys. Uh, today is just a reminder that. Um, Man, if you have ever had a chance to visit any other country, uh, we are definitely blessed. Uh, we have it way better than, than other places, man. Especially, uh, I hate to call them this, but what are labeled as third world countries, man. Central America, South America. Some of those countries, man, you know, for example, they get water a certain, only a certain amount of time. They only get lights at a certain amount of time. And the work, man, it's um, scarce, man. It's scarce. And so enjoy it today, man. But don't forget that fighting for freedom is an everyday thing. And today in, in this nation, we're dealing with one where, you know, our brothers are, are fighting, fighting for equal justice here in their nation where they are not really judged by their color, but, but by their character. And it stands true today. Today, we're going to get to a very important topic especially now that i think i saw a post say that we're about 10 weeks away from the nfl season to start and man we we definitely have a lot to talk about but today we're going to talk about the tight end group that's right ladies and gentlemen the tight end group that is led by we'll start by the highest paid contract darren fells who was resigned this off season to a I believe it was a two-year seven million dollar contract a guy who will in his last year of this contract with the texas will be entering the age of 35 and early on last year he decided um to he was going to make an impact and he was going to earn a starting role on this offense and that he did uh, as the season went by i think his role began to diminish a little bit um, as you guys know last year uh, we had the rookie Kahali wearing go down with an injury stash in IR we also had Jordan Thomas go down with an injury stashed in IR then later brought back uh, but not really involved in the offense as much as we would have liked compared to the previous year and then we have Jordan Akins who I believe everyone loves because one he does all the blocking that ob likes and two when you really need to play from jordan akins i think he gets it done and that's what o'brien wants they he wants the dependable uh type of player um and so you know looking at this season i've heard uh some crazy things i've heard people say that we got to cut a tight end someone's going to get cut and I don't believe now, I believe uh, two weeks ago when I had my conversation with Aaron Wilson, this was one of the questions that I asked him about our tight ends. And he straight up said, no, I believe the Texans will keep four tight ends on this roster. Nothing has been told to me to the fact that there's going to be competition to cut someone. It's more about competition about who is going to get the reps on the field. So that speaks, speaks volume, I think. That definitely speaks volume. And so... Look, I agree with that. The contracts that you have these tight ends under, Darren Fells is making the most. Everyone else is on rookie contracts. You know, so Kahali Waring uh, is actually making more money than Jordan Thomas. So when people say that Jordan Thomas is an odd man out, I just find that very hard to believe. And I don't know if you guys have, have seen, but Jordan Thomas and Kiki QT have been training together. Not sure if that's the best of signs, especially with Kiki QT and everything that went down, but... They both are looking to make an impact to be more of, of, of a splash player. Now, Jordan Thomas, to me, had a splash in 2018. Uh, it was unfortunate that he went down with an injury this year. Uh, but I, I still think Jordan Thomas is one hell of a tight end. And you release him, and I bet you he's not going to be more than a day in the market without getting signed. So, I like I said, I don't think the Texans cut any of these tight ends they have another tight end i can't remember his name i think he probably doesn't even make the 53 not sure if he even gets stashed in the practice squad but between these four like it, it doesn't even make sense to cut let's look at some of these numbers with these tight ends now darren fell has a two-year six million uh three hundred thousand dollars he had a million dollar signing bonus his average salary is 3.150 with a guarantee of two million dollars 
he'll be a free agent like i said by the time he's 35 uh in 2022 so this year uh let's say for some odd reason the texans decide to cut him uh it looks like we would be hit with a 3.5 of that contract pretty much half of that contract uh we would be paying if they decide to cut him for some reason i doubt that they cut jordan fells because obviously that's the reason they signed but i've seen a lot less <laughs> from ob then next um you have kahali wearing who has a four-year 3.6 uh four uh million dollar contract signing bonus was just under a million eight at eight uh, i'm sorry eight, uh, eight hundred ninety two thousand dollars and he will be an, a free agent in 2023 his his base salary is it was 378,000 last year because of his injury. He had 650 he's going to have 658,000 this year if they were to cut him, it would be a little bit less than a million uh to cut him. Doubt that they cut Kahali Waring. They still need to see what he is on the field and he looks promising from what everyone said. Yes. Uh I believe you have Jordan Akins on a 4-year rookie deal. 3.325 that's three million three hundred twenty five thousand dollars signing bonus of seven hundred and sixty thousand dollar guaranteed is exactly the same and this is his third year um you know like i said everyone loves jordan akins but if they would decide to cut him it would only be under a mill uh to cut him as well don't see him being cut there's no reason to be in cut you're not paying him that much that like, you need to make space like you can keep these four titles in the roster and i, and I think that's what people don't understand like there's no rush to it, especially if you have Kahali Warren who hasn't been out there on the field. We know how OB feels about non-veteran players. Do you really think Kahali's going to get all the snaps with Darren Fell? It's like, no, they're going to split snaps. Now, next year, next year, there definitely will be cuts. And I'm hoping that it's Darren Fell because he's the older gentleman. And these other three men, you 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 got studs there, and and why not really keep them right? Uh, but you never know. Upcoming next year, now this year, like I said, I don't see them being cut. And, and then the last man, who everyone keeps saying is the odd man out. I don't know why. Four year, uh, two point five seventy eight, two million five hundred seventy eight thousand dollars signing bonus was really under one hundred eighteen thousand um and to cut him it would be 779,000 he's going into his third year and like i said i i, I really don't think that <laughs> jordan thomas is the odd man out matter of fact jordan akins earlier this off season said about him trying to put in work with uh jordan thomas so look i i i don't i don't see ob cutting any of these players I remember when we first had signed Darren Fells and then we drafted a tight end and Kahali. Everyone was like, what the hell? We just signed Darren Fells. Look, you're talking about the guy who depended on tight ends in New England in O'Brien. I think he knows the importance of having more than two or three players in depth at that position. Look what happened last year. Two of his tight ends went down. Do you think he doesn't have that in the back of his mind and he's gonna cut one of them like no if he said that this year is all about veterans then the people that know his playbook are going to be on this roster and i believe that all four tight ends according to aaron wilson will be on this roster and that's just my spill about it man and you can hate on it you can uh, feel whatever you want to feel about it at the end of the day with time all the things that i'm saying on this channel we're going to have to face them whether i'm wrong about them or whether i'm right about them we're gonna have to see right but man i'm excited about this nfl season uh, everything seems to continue to go on i know that they've already put in uh, a request to not, not have any preseason games i don't know how i feel about that one because or, you know, previous Texans, what they've done is they have limited the play of starters in preseason. And then they look rusty to start the season. Now, last year against the Saints, I don't think we looked rusty. But the year before that against the Patriots, we looked a little rusty at the beginning of the year. So, them not getting snaps, them not being able to bring in teams to the facility to even train. I don't know, man. I think you do need definitely two preseason games. And I think it works out best because those in, in those two preseason games... Like O'Brien has said, he's not just going to bring in people to fill a 90-man roster. He's going to limit that. And so he'll really have a chance to see what he has 
on this roster and make adjustments to that and that's by playing those starters where there is the first quarter in in the first preseason game and a half in the second preseason game you definitely are able to do that and i hope this actually turns out to be the future of the nfl with just two preseason games because that's really all you need there's really no need for four preseason games i think that's more i guess that's more in a, a a giving an opportunity to some of the players that will not be making the roster to be seen by other teams especially in that fourth preseason game but you know it, 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 to me it's unnecessary but definitely looking forward to this nfl season man and i keep forgetting that our opening game is against the kansas city chiefs and i can't wait man i think that i think this game is going to be better than our monday night game against the saints and like i've said i really see the texans coming out of arrowhead in on their opening night ceremony of the defending world champions in the chiefs who by the way uh might be changing their name something to keep an eye on uh, this thing is it started with the redskins now it's really going everywhere in sports in the united states so curious to see what happens <laughs> with the kansas city chiefs but either way man it don't matter if they name the chiefs it don't matter if they name the generals it, it don't matter the houston texans will show up on opening night thursday night and hand it to them man i really believe that but you know what it is every day baby it's h-town let's get it